something that the governor said when he was on with uh, <clears throat> with uh, Ray and Joe. Question came up about diverting money away from the special transportation fund into the general budget, which basically created the crisis that we're told exists. The governor says that's mythology. It didn't happen. Joining us now, uh, return visit. Uh, she represents the 134th district and covers uh, Fairfield Trumbull and um, very knowledgeable of these things. She's on the ranking Republican member on the Transportation Committee. We want to welcome Laura Devlin back to the program. Laura, thanks for coming on today. Thank you. Happy to be here. Happy New Year to you. Happy New Year. I've got a lot of questions for you, but let me let me ask you this first one. So the governor the governor dodged this question the other day. Someone said that, uh, well, the fact is, you know, there was money that was supposed to go in the transportation fund that was, and, and I will say as a caveat, that was a, a bipartisan agreement struck in 2018 having to do with vehicle tax. Hey, and he said, oh, no, that never happened. That's mythology. <laughs> so it, it, is, did it happen or did it not happen? Well, right. So why can't we just share real clear facts instead of, you know, political spin? So here's, here's what happened and why it's troubling. So in the governor's original budget proposal, he proposed diverting $170 million from the special transportation fund, mm -hmm. right? Now, then the Democrats put together the budget that has, was enacted this past year. Um, and what that included was that technically the $170 million will go back to the special transportation fund mm -hmm. but instead of the original schedule which that should have been in in the first two years mm -hmm. it won't go out till years three and four yeah. so here's why it's troubling mm -hmm. first he clearly showed his intent with his original budget of after putting in the constitutional lockbox ignoring that and trying to divert the funds secondly by putting it into schedule years three and four that's another budget cycle right so while it gives a talking point that oh no no we put the money back it could change in the next budget yeah yeah so i mean it, it, so we're, we're it, it's the shell game it's 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 a little smoke and mirrors here it's not and it is all why there is such an issue of trust with our government yeah so um help me understand this um I, we had Themis Claritas on Monday, Tuesday. I forget. I lose track of time. Um, I said, chance of special session. She said, I don't think so. I don't I don't think there's enough time to pull it off, you know, less than three weeks in a month. Uh, and now I'm hearing, yeah, maybe we're going to have a special session. The governor obviously wants it. W what are you hearing? So, I mean, the same thing, right? A lot of who knows what's going to happen because the last that the Senate said was, well, we don't have 18 vetoes, which is kind of a crazy thing. Um, and who knows, actually, you know, in the House, they possibly could. But the bottom line is there's majorities in both houses. So if they wanted to do this, they could do it at any time. But I think that two critical things are essential to happen. One, the governor said he wanted to look Connecticut people right in the eye to be able to tell them about his plan. Right. Then he needs to start doing town halls across the state. And that one hour meetings where they put on a smoke and mirror show, they yeah. need to talk and listen to the people in the state of Connecticut. And the other thing that needs to happen is a public hearing. So the last time there was a public hearing in the transportation committee on poll, there was over 6,000 pieces of testimony that mm. crashed the system. There were hundreds of phone calls that went in that flooded the phone line. Yep. So clearly people have opinions about this and they need to be told the facts, have their questions answered before anything happens. And isn't it, um, <clears throat> we're talking with Laura, Laura Devlin from the, uh, the state uh, uh, Republicans. Um, isn't it in fact, Laura, that if the, and, and, and probably the greatest impetus for wanting a special session is if they can pull off a special session, they can take the vote on tolls immediately. They don't have a special session. They're they're required to have public hearings. Is that true? Yeah. Okay. So nobody nobody wants. Well, I mean, I mean, nobody on the toll side wants public hearings. And and I would think we would do whatever we had to do to to not have public hearings. 
And keep in mind, even in a regular session, there's enough shenanigans that go on that things <laughs> come to the floor where there has been no public hearing. Yeah. <laughs> shenanigans, <And> what, that's good. <laughs> um, so um, the other thing I'm hearing, Bob Godfrey, one of your colleagues on the other side of the aisle, uh, made a statement recently that, that he doesn't even know if the votes are there on the House side. He's not even sure. Right. Right. And and we know at best, Mar Martin Looney tells us, at best there's 18 votes in the Senate where, where they don't hate the idea. They don't love it, but they, they you know. Uh, yeah. So it only would take one Senate defection of the 18 to sink that. So uh, are the votes there or not? I mean, even if they have a special session, do they even have the votes to pass the thing? Uh, that's the big question. I, you know, I, I certainly don't know the answer to that. Um, and, you know, these legislators are getting a lot of pressure, and rightly so, because if you think about it, so they're talking about just 12 tolls, just on bridges. Yeah. That, but that's a lot of infrastructure across six highways. Yeah. I can't even tell you what those highways are because yeah. that has not been shared. Right. We don't know. And, and it's an interesting talking point because it also gives a visual to people, well, we're just going to troll the tractor trailers. That's all. Mm -hmm. But if you think about it, why are you targeting them? It's not the fact that they're a tractor trailer. It's what they weigh. It's the right. weight, right. right? Right. But there are other, many other vehicles in those weight categories. So why are they excluding them? Well, and 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 what are they going to do when when the truckers sue the state, which is going to happen? When there's no Absolutely. question about it. I've had the trucking association on, and they said if not them, someone's going to sue the state in the trucking world. And when we see that lawsuit playing out now in Rhode Island. Uh, yep. And beside the fact, the governor the governor is somewhat misleading, and he, and he said this the other day. He said there's only three choices here. There is bonding, which is, and he was knocking the Republican plan, bonding, which is borrowing, uh, or rating the, rating the rainy day fund, or raising the money in with tolls. Well, that's really disingenuous because what he is doing is, in essence, is bonding because the whole reason he wants to do this, correct me if I'm wrong, he needs to show a revenue stream that can help pay off the low interest federal loans that we're going to be up to our eyeballs in. So he's borrowing too. I mean, to, to make it sound like his plan doesn't require borrowing, but it, but the Republic, that, that's just not that's just not accurate. Absolutely, I'm so glad that you pointed that out because their new talking point is. Oh, look, we just want to toll tractor trailers versus borrowing that would be paid by all Connecticut taxpayers. But if you start to look at the numbers, which change every day, and yeah. I can't even tell you in detail what they are at this point, <laughs> but it's less than 1% of the $19 billion that he wants to spend would come from these tractor trailer toys. Right, right. They want to include general obligation bonding at $100 million. Yeah. And while they criticize the Senate Republican plan of taking a portion of the rainy day fund to pay off pensions right. it's intended for when it reaches the threshold, mm -hmm. that frees up the interest that we have to pay mm -hmm. so that that can support transportation infrastructure. Mm -hmm. And they're also talking about using the rainy day fund after it reaches that threshold. But the question is, are they going to use it to pay off pensions? Is that supposed to happen? Are they just going to go blow the money? I mean, there's so many questions um, and facts that haven't been shared. It's it's crazy. There's lots of sound bites going around. But there. I just think it's disingenuous for Governor Lamont to to make to frame the argument that there's only three options. Absolutely. And then and then try to make it sound like he's not using one of them, which is borrowing. I mean, I I, I think it's ludicrous to, to even, but he does. He, I mean, just as clear as day, he said it on on the Absolutely. air. Absolutely. Um, and you know, the people in the state of Connecticut are so tired of this nonsense. You know, we appreciate you were at one of the toll forums yeah. that uh, Senator Martin and I hosted did yep. over twenty across the state, mm -hmm. and our whole objective was to share facts, not political spin, yep. and answer any questions that anybody had. Mm -hmm. And what we're seeing is just more of spin, sound bites, uh, you know, not the not true facts. Yeah. Or not facts at all. <laughs> Lack of facts. 
Absolutely. We'd be happy to have a few facts tossed in there once in a while, just to you know, just just like throwing the dog a bone. Um, I, I so it's anybody's guess. Uh, is that right? So so what what what's your gut on the special session? Yes or no? I don't know how they're going to do it. Okay, then which is what Themis said. Themis said she doesn't see how you pull it off this late in the game. Maybe. Um, okay, let's say they do. Let's say they get the special session. Mm-hmm. What's your gut on the Senate? Forget the House. Let's say the House is going to vote on it. What's your gut on the Senate? Does the Senate pass this? Oh, well, I don't think they're not going to call a special session unless they have the votes locked up. It's not like you go and they're going to call a special session to discuss and vote on something and have intelligent conversation about it and, you know, try to convince people they are not going to do it unless they've got the vote lined up. So is that an indication? All right, let's 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 back this up then, because Martin Looney says there's 18 people who haven't rejected it. I interpret that there's 18 people who don't hate it. Um, it's not exactly a, right, right. It's not exactly a ringing endorsement, Laura. Right? We're talking with Laura, uh, State Rep. Laura Devlin from the uh, 30, 134th District, which is Fairfield Trumbull, that that part of the world. Uh, you know, I'm not against it. Is not exactly a ringing endorsement, right? Absolutely. So, and you know, it's funny because some of the legislators will say, "Oh, you know, why don't they have the why don't meaning other legislators have the courage to stand up and do something like this." You know what? Hallelujah for those legislators that have the courage to stand up against their party and do what's right for the state of Connecticut and the taxpayers who are saying no. Yeah, no. yeah. Well, so no. it, it, can we can we interpret? And, and I know this is kind of stretching it, but can we interpret a a not a, the absence of a special session? Let's say it doesn't happen. Can we interpret that to say that they don't think they have the votes? Oh, I would definitely think so, but I would love to believe that it's because they would also want to do the right thing of giving the governor an opportunity to follow through on his commitment to look people in the eye at town halls across the state and to also (laughs) hold a public hearing that is properly noticed so that people can share their opinions and we can hear them. Well, that's why I like you, Laura. You are far less skeptical than I am. I would never give them that kind of space. I would never in a million years give them that kind of credit. Um, All right. Well, I wanted to clear that up because, you know, he made it sound like, oh, we never diverted any money at all. Never happened. It's mythology. Well, that's not quite true. And then the, the, the three choices and mine aren't one of them. That isn't true either. So we wanted to clear those things up and, um, Keep us keep us posted. If you hear anything, please feel free to uh, to get that to us uh, so that we can share that with with our listeners. All right. Yes, absolutely. Okay. Thank, Th- you. thank you so much, Laura Devlin. Appreciate you coming in.